Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to still continue on acid base and salt. So today we are going to look at the effects of solvent on solutes, but now in regards to acids. So previously we were able to differentiate between strong acids, weak acids, and concentrated acids and dilute acids. And we saw how those the four concepts have been put together and what affects what. We further looked at like how we can test for the strength of acids using uh, production of gases, uh, electricity, and the pH. Make sure you go back to that lesson and check out what we discussed. So today we are going to look at the effects of solvent on solids and practice question. This is a very assessed question because it's also testing other concepts of electro electrolysis. So a solute is defined as a substance that dissolves in a solvent. In this case, the most common uh, solvent we use is water. Solutes can vary because they are in solid state. So a solvent is a component of a solution that is present in the greatest amount. It's a substance in which the solid dissolves in. So if you were to look for an example of salt dissolving in water, salt, which is a sodium chloride, for example, would be the solute, and then the water would be the solvent. So when these two uh, dissolve together or mix, they form what we refer to as a solution. So these are concepts you mentioned in salts. So in chemistry, we also have another concept you mentioned, which is called polarity. So polarity is a separation of electrical charge leading to a molecule or its chemical groups having an electric dipole moment. The negatively charged end and a positively charged end. So polar molecules must contain polar bonds due to a difference in the electronegativity between the bonded atoms. So a polar molecule is generated when one end of a molecule has a higher amount of positive charge than the opposite end, resulting in an electrical, electric pole. So when a molecule is, uh, is stated to have a polar bond, the negative charge center will be on one side, while the positive charge center will be on the other side. So it will be a polar molecule from beginning to the end. So, and then polar molecules are the ones that are not contain the charges at the end due to finally dispersed electrons that symmetrically cancel each other. So, examples of polar molecules we have like water. So, if you look at the water, the uh, oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen. So, it tends to acquire a negative charge because it pulls electrons closer to itself. These are the shared pair of electrons. So it behaves like a negatively charged ion. That's why it has like a, pulse, a negative partial negativity on it. And then the hydrogen, since they are, they only have, they are only uh, possibly charged, or like they, are, they have only protons, the electrons have been shared, and these electrons have been pulled closer to where the oxygen is. So they, they tend to behave like they are losing those electrons. So they, they attain a partial positivity on them. So they like they behave like they are positively charged. So that's why we say it's partial positive. So you can see there is a, a negatively charged end and a positively charged. You can see that polarity. If we take the case of hydrogen fluoride, the fluoride ion is more electronegative. So it pulls electrons closer to itself, the electrons that are being shared. So it is behaving as if it's gaining those electrons. That's why it gains a partial negativity. So the hydrogen behaves as if it's losing those electrons because it, is, it has a positive uh, nucleus. So we say it attains a positive partial charge. So you can see there is a, this pole and this pole, so you can see the polarity that is happening. So these are just examples. We have also other examples of polar substances. The most common polar solvent is water. And the fact that there's a polar solvent makes it behave so differently with other polar substances. So if you were to consider this water, uh, it gives it its unique property. That's why water is like in liquid state when it should have been in water state. A liquid state because it forms hydrogen bonds with one another. So if you pick a water molecule and you bond it with another water molecule, it's going to bond with the hydrogen ions. 
So the partial positively charged hydrogen and the partial uh, negatively charged uh, oxygen, it's like it happens that way. So the partially negative oxygen attracts the partially positive hydrogen, while for the other molecule, the partially negative oxygen attracts the partially positive hydrogen. So that's how it looks like. So if you were to do an experiment to show these properties, for example, hydrochloric uh, gas is bubbled through a beaker containing water, and another one is bubbled through a beaker containing methyl benzene. So hydrochloric acid is passed to the solution using an inverted permeable, of course, to prevent that stuff back. So the resultant solution are uh, each separately subjected to various tests as shown. So these tests are uh, they they are tested with a litmus paper, uh, indicator, magnesium ribble, marble chips, and conductivity. So it was noted that the aqueous solution of HCl, this is where the hydrochloric gas has dissolved in the water, it's going to turn blue litmus paper red, meaning it shows the acidic properties. It turns the universal indicator red also, showing its acidic properties. There is also evolution of hydrogen gas uh, when it reacts with magnesium ribbon and carbon four oxide when it reacts with the marble chips. And then also conductivity, it was noted that it conducts electricity. When these tests were done on the hydrochloric uh, gas in the methyl benzene, everything was negative. So there was no effect on this mass paper. Um, the universal indicator turned green, meaning then it was neutral and there was no reaction with magnesium. There was no reaction with the marble chip and it did not conduct electricity. So what does this tell us on about the hydrochloric gas? So the results show that the aqueous solution of hydrochloric behaves as an acid, but the solution in methyl benzene lacks those acidic properties. So when hydrochloric acid dissolves in water, it dissociates into ions. So hydrochloric aqueous dissociates to hydrogen ions and the chloride ions. The hydrogen ions are the ones that give it its acidic property. That's the reason why it uh, conducts electricity because of the hydrogen ions. It stands blue, it's mass separate, it stands universal red, it reacts with magnesium to form hydrogen uh, gas, it reacts with the carbonates to form carbon dioxide. But the hydrochloric gas that is now in the methyl benzene, it does not have all those properties because it still exists as a molecule. Why? Because the hydrochloric does not dissociate. It doesn't dissociate into free ions. So hydrogen chloride dissolves in water because both hydrochloric and water are polar molecules. So they both have those polar charges that are able to attract each other. While in so the, this causes a mutual attraction on both odds of hydrochloric molecule by different water molecules, causing it to dissociate. So if you were to look at it in, so we have the hydrogen ions and the chloride ion. So the hydrogen ions are attracted to the partially negative ox, uh, oxygen. And then the chloride ions are partially attracted to the hydrogen ions. So it causes it to dissociate. So we have HCl dissociating to hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And we know these ones are partially attracted to the water molecule. So this causes them to dissociate. So hydrochloric acid plus water causes hydrogen chloride aqueous solution, which dissociates to hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So the presence of the hydrogen ions in aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride explains the conductivity and the acidic properties of hydrogen chloride. So the acidic properties we notice it turns blue into mass paper red, it evolves hydrogen gas when it reacts with magnesium, it evolves carbon dioxide when it reacts with carbonates. But methyl benzene has a weak attraction for hydrogen chloride because it's non-polar. Hence hydrogen chloride remains as a molecule in methyl benzene. So this is this is a question that uh, is usually brought a lot in our KCSC papers. So it is important to see what's happening. One is dissociating, the other one is remaining as a molecule. So that the polarity bit of the concept comes in here on also the dissociation part of it. So that brings us to the end. So in the next lesson, we are going to look at basis now. 
what are some of the properties of basins, and then I will move on. So see you in the next lesson.